Welcome to our 10 a.m. worship service here at Leeds Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, this is the first Sunday of this new year, and we are certainly glad to have you here to worship with us. Uh, we know that you have many choices when it comes to your online worship experience, and we certainly are glad that you have chosen to join us this morning. 
Listen, this is the first Sunday. We're excited about the fact that as the calendar year has turned, we have a new opportunity, we have new grace, we have new mercy, and we certainly thank God for, even though 2020 was a different year, God was still with us. God was still faithful, and I know that you can testify that God certainly brought you through many situations. And so we come to celebrate this morning, uh, to celebrate this first Sunday of this new year, the first Sunday of January, which again brings us new opportunities, new hopes, and certainly new mercies and new grace. So we invite you to center yourself with us, allow God's Spirit to move in your heart, allow God's Spirit to minister to you, and allow the Holy Spirit to again also motivate you to worship God in spirit and in truth. We will have our call to worship this morning, followed by our opening hymn, uh, then followed by our prayer and our scripture readings, then we will follow our worship experience as we normally do. It is now time for our call to worship on this first Sunday in January. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Amen. It is now again time for our opening hymn. Uh, allow it to usher us again further into the worship of our God. And And the burdens of my heart 
power of the cross. We thank God for the sacrifice that his son Jesus made for us on the cross. We thank the Lord for the fact that we didn't have to pay for our own crimes, uh, but yet Jesus died that we may again have eternal life. And again, we come to celebrate God and his goodness. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for our uh, prayer this morning as we continue in our worship experience. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, first of all, for watching over us as we slept last night. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. God, we know it was not our alarm clocks, but God, we know it was not the TV. It was not dogs barking or birds chirping or cars going by, oh God, but it was your hand of love that touched us this morning, God. It was your hand of love that, that awakened our spirits. It was your hand of love, oh God, that allowed us to have one more day in the land of the living. And so, God, we first come saying thank you for that. We thank you, God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for so many blessings that we don't even know we've received, God, so many dangers you've kept from us, oh God. And so we come again in a spirit of celebration, thanking you, God, this morning. We come also, God, because we know that there are some among us who have particular needs and desires, Lord, that they are laying at your feet as they petition your throne, oh God. We know that there are people who are coming uh, who are needing healing, oh God. We know that there are people who are coming who need uh, direction for their lives. Lord, we know that there are people who are in desperate need of financial stability and financial breakthroughs. God, we know that there are families who are in need of, of uh, reuniting, God. Lord, we know that there are young people who are in need of the strength to resist the temptation of peer pressure. God, we come uh, in, in solidarity. God, we come uh, in, in a spirit of intercession, believing, O oh God, that you will hear our prayers. We come, O oh God, again, thanking you for what you've done, but we come, O oh Lord, also remembering your word where it says if we come to you, God, and, and we submit ourselves to your will, Lord, that you will hear our prayers. And so as we come into this new year, O oh God, we come with an expectation that our lives will definitely be different and they will be transformed and changed. And so God, you know what's on our hearts and minds. Lord, you know what needs we have. God, you know what areas of our life need to be improved. And so God, we simply say to you, thank you. And God, we ask that you would continue to bless us. God, we ask that you would continue to answer prayers. God, we ask that you would continue to comfort those who have uh, had to bury loved ones. God, we ask that you would Again, comfort those who have loved ones who are in the hospital, God. We simply, God, come because you are the only source that we have for help, oh God. And so, Lord, we say again, thank you for what you have done. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to guide and direct our hearts and minds. Continue, oh Lord, to bless us as we, your children, God, come to you as our Father, thanking you again for what you've done for us and simply saying, God, that we love you, and we know, oh God, that you will hear our prayers. Lord, this is our prayer in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name. Amen. Our scriptures this morning uh, come from the book of Jeremiah and from the book of Ephesians. Uh, the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14 will be our Old Testament scripture reading. And I invite you to turn there with us as we read now our Old Testament scripture coming from the New Revised Standard Version. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. 
proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give their priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Amen. We thank God for that reminder of his promise of provision. Our New Testament scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter number one, verses three through 14. Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14. And once again, we are reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I invite you to turn there with us as we now hear the word of the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to, pray, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for our preface to the Decalogue, the summary of the Decalogue, and our Apostles' Creed. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise.
words of Christ our Savior when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. certainly uh, are glad on this first Sunday to be able to again hear those words of Christ our Savior about loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and also loving our neighbor as ourself, and to have the chance to reaffirm our faith. It is so vitally important that we know what it is that we believe as Christians, and so the Apostles' Creed is always a great uh, part of our worship experience to remind us of of what we do believe in. We now will have a selection from our choir, after which we will have our sermon for today.
give praise and honor to God again for all that he has done for us. Amen. As we come on this first Sunday in January, I am so very excited about uh, this new year that we have before us. I'm excited about the new possibilities that God has in store for all of us. And I hope that you will join me in this excitement. I know that for many, it seems as if just the flipping of a calendar page may not mean that much is going to be different. But I guarantee you uh, that most of us uh, can have a great deal of change in our lives if we allow ourselves to change the way that we approach things. And so I, I invite you, of course, to approach this new day, this new year, this new month uh, with an open heart and mind. Uh, as Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind me and pressing toward those things which are before me. That is our opportunity we have for us, not just today, but throughout the whole rest of the year. All right. So our scripture this morning for our sermon comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, verses three through six and then verses 15 through 19. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, and then verses 15 through 19. Uh, let us now turn to God's word as we will now hear our scripture reading for today. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come once again thanking you for this day. Uh, we now ask, O oh God, that as you send forth your word, that your word will be powerful, that your word will be meaningful, and that your word will do exactly what you have purposed it to be. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bless us, that our eyes may be opened, our hearts may be receptive, and that our spirits may be transformed and changed by your preached word. So that when we leave from this place, O oh God, we will indeed be different than how we were when we first started worship. This, O oh Lord, is our prayer in your Son, Jesus, the Christ's name. Amen. For just a few moments, I want to look at this first chapter in Ephesians, chapter, uh, verses 3 through 6 and verses 15 through 19 and focus on this theme for this first Sunday in January and the first Sunday of this new year. Protecting your future. Protecting your future. As we come on this first Sunday of a new calendar year, we have the opportunity to begin a new chapter in our lives. New years bring with them the opportunity to have new beginnings, or to continue what was started in the final months of the previous year. Whatever the case may be, we still need guidance from God on how we should conduct our lives. One of the more beneficial things we can do is change the way that we look at our new year. Oftentimes we make resolutions because we see areas of our lives that need to be improved 
And we know the new year gives us more encouragement. Uh, we list out that we resolve maybe to eat better as a concern for our health. We resolve that maybe we will save more money out of concern for our financial disposition. We make resolutions that we will maybe exercise more, maybe that we will have more conversations with our children, maybe we'll be more patient, uh, maybe we will be more diligent at our job. We have a list of things that we resolve to do because we identify areas in our life that we know need to be improved. The change I want to submit for your consideration is that we approach the new year as a future that God has already laid out and we need to protect it. So consider that this new year for us, 2021, is a future that God has already laid out. So from January the 4th, on through December 31st is our future. None of us know what is in it, but God does. And he has already laid it out for us. And it's up to you and I to protect that future. We know from reading our Bible that God is able to move from the future to our present, which also teaches us that he wants us to have a good future. And the only ones who can mess it up are you and I. So Paul gives us three things that we can do in the new year to protect our future. The first thing he says is this. We have to know our hope. Paul talks about the fact that he he hopes that he prays rather that God will open the eyes of our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts to, so that we will see and understand the hope to which God has called us. And that's important to understand because hope is one of the greatest things that God gives to us because what it says is this, there's a possibility that there's a different outcome to the situation that we're currently facing. Paul says, I want you to know what the hope is that he has called you to, right? And this is important because God calls us to hope. And hope from God is not just some wishful thinking that things will change, but rather a key component to our future. In the book of Hebrews, Paul says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith fuels and fills our hope. Hope is there, but faith fills it up. Without faith, hope has no substance and no meaning. So Paul tells us that when we have received hope from God, it is something we can be sure is coming. For years, people heard and, and, and hoped and, and were told that a Savior would come. And when Jesus came, their hopes were fulfilled. It was passed down from generation to generation, from family to family, that, that one day God would send his Messiah, that one day God would send his Savior. Even from the book of Genesis, we see that when God is talking to Adam and Eve, he tells Eve that she shall give birth to this hope. She shall give birth to this salvation. When we see the conversation going on between Mary and, and the angel, the angel tells her that her cousin Elizabeth has already conceived the child. And when she goes and talks to Mary, the baby in Elizabeth's womb jumps out of hope because the baby even sensed the vessel that was going to be bringing the Savior. And so John the Baptist, born of Elizabeth, goes out into the wilderness declaring to make straight the paths of the one who is coming because he was hoping that Jesus would soon show up and his hope was reassured. And so we understand that hope is not something we just wish for, but it is something we can bank on and can count on. You know the story of Joseph, uh, the, the, the son that was sold into slavery by his brothers. They tried to kill him first, but then they decided to sell him into slavery instead. Well, he gets sold into slavery as he's there in Potiphar's house. He's trying to do the right thing, but yet he gets accused of something he didn't do. And then he gets put in prison. While in prison, he is interpreting dreams and everybody down there saying, listen, Joseph, if we ever get out of here, we are not going to forget about you. But when they got out, they forgot about him. But Joseph kept hoping that God didn't forget about him. Joseph kept hoping that God would soon bring him up from his situation. And Joseph's hopes 
weren't just based upon some wishful thinking, but it was based upon the relationship that Joseph had with God. Joseph had been in conversation with God before, and Joseph knew that he belonged to God, and so he was able to hope and believe that God would come and get him. And indeed, when God did it, his hope was reassured and his hope was fulfilled. This is what God is asking us to do in this new year, is to know the hope to which God has called us. When we face financial adversity, our hope is often placed in our human ability to get ourselves out of it. We seek a second job, cut some expenses, and all of that is good, but what happens when we can't get the second job or the expenses seem to be increasing too much is our hope seems to die. It's in these moments that we should really focus on the heavenly hope and not the earthly hope. The heavenly hope is based on what God knows and what God has planned for us. It is the heavenly hope that knows that God will cause miracles to happen that we had no idea about. That God will cause some folks to see you some money in the mail that you weren't even expecting. That God will cause you to apply for the job that you weren't even thinking about. And that God will cause doors to open that you had not planned on being open. This is the heavenly hope that God knows he can open that were closed by human hands, but opened by God's hands. When we face health issues, our hope is often placed on our human ability to get ourselves well. We go to doctors and place all of our hope on their predictions. But what happens when what they predict doesn't go the way we want? It is in these moments that we should focus on the heavenly hope and not the earthly hope. Heavenly hope informs us that it is God who made us and not we ourselves. It was this heavenly hope that the woman with the issue of blood placed her hope in. Yes, she went from doctor to doctor as she should have, but when all of that got exhausted, she finally laid back on the heavenly hope and said, let me go to Jesus and let me come and find out what this man is talking about. I've heard that he has healing in his hands, but if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she was hoping that something would happen. And when she reached out in hope and she grabbed hold of the hem of his garment, the hem of his robe, Jesus felt some hope being pulled out of him. He felt some virtue being pulled out of him. He felt some righteousness. He felt some faith being pulled out of him. And because of her hope, because she'd been called by hope, she was able to be healed. It was, it was this promise that she had that if she got there, she'd be able to do it. It's this heavenly hope that reminds us that when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he promised us that by his stripes, we would be healed. It reminds us that because he died for our sins, we can overcome every obstacle and every disease on earth. But more than that, the death of Jesus opened up heaven to each of us so that when we have physical healing, we can also have heavenly healing. It's this hope that God calls us to. And Paul says, if you knew the hope that you had inside of you, you'd protect your future. When we find ourselves with issues other than health or finance, our hope still has to rest in who God is and not who we are. It's this hope that Paul says, hey, if you knew what the hope was inside of you, you protect your future. So, so we know now, starting tomorrow, or really starting today, looking for tomorrow, we need to know the hope to which God has called us. God knows what kind of world we live in, but God also knows that he puts inside of us the hope for a better day. God knows the kind of situation we're going to be in, but he calls us to hope for a better day. He calls us to hope that things will be all right. It's the same kind of hope that he called Moses to when he said, Moses, I want you to go and free my people. He said, but beware that Pharaoh's going to keep telling you no, but you keep on hoping and keep on believing. You keep having faith in me and you will be delivered. Keep going back every time he says no. Keep going back every time he denies you. Keep going back every time he turns you down because your hope is not built on his words, but your hope is going to be built on my promise. And so I say to you, church, I say to you, my brothers and sisters, let your hope this year be built on Jesus Christ. Let your hope this year be built on his solid rock. Let your hope this year be built on his promise. Let your hope be built on the fact that you know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything you can think. 
and possibly imagine, oh, this year's going to be a great one for you if you allow yourself to know the hope to which God has called you, if you allow yourself not to be distracted by what others say, but instead put yourself into God's word, study God's word, let God's word minister to you, let God's word feed you, let God's word comfort you, and I guarantee you, you will know the hope to which God has called you. And then when you know the hope, you'll want to protect the hope. Yeah, there's something that God wants you to have. And God wants you to protect that. God wants you to be engaged in activities that will help you avoid losing your hope. The second thing is this. Paul said that we have to know our inheritance. We have to know our inheritance along with knowing the hope to which he has called us, we need to know the inheritance that we have among the saints. Uh, about a week ago, one of our points referenced becoming children of God. And we talked about the fact that, yes, we are all born of God, but in order to be children of God, we must act a certain way. We must pursue those heavenly things. But as children of God, we also have something that others don't have. We have an inheritance that comes from our fathers. And you know how an inheritance works. Uh, in most cases, you never get the inheritance until somebody dies and it passes on to you. In a similar manner, the death of Christ makes it available for you and I to receive an inheritance from God. It is the death of Jesus that activates the inheritance. Yes, God the Father had an inheritance set aside for us. Yes, the inheritance was eternal life, but it was also an abundant life here on earth. And I think sometimes we miss that because, of course, it's important, vitally important for us to preach about and to sing about and to pray about and to read about and to learn about eternal life and to learn about salvation. But God doesn't just have an inheritance for eternal life for us. He also has for us an inheritance of an abundant life here on earth. And so the death of Christ activated that. And what Paul says is this, we need to have the eyes of our heart open so that we can know how great of an inheritance we have. In other words, if we knew how much we stood to gain, we wouldn't risk losing it by doing foolish stuff and giving it to temptation. If we knew how much we had to gain here on earth, we wouldn't jeopardize our inheritance by doing foolish things and giving it to sin. If we knew how much we had to inherit on tomorrow, if we knew how much we had to inherit next week, if we knew how much God had set aside for us next month, we would do things much differently. God sets it up so that we would be crazy to risk losing what we can inherit just to satisfy ourselves temporarily. But that's our human nature. The human nature we have is we do not value what we have for tomorrow, only what we want for today. You may say, no, 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 Reverend, I, I know how to wait. I, I know how to put away uh, temptation. I know how to have delayed gratification. But let me point out something to you. It's part of our human nature because we see it in Esau's activities. You know that Jacob and Esau were brothers and Esau was the firstborn and, and, and Esau was in the right position because he was the firstborn and, and therefore was to get the inheritance of their father. So one day Esau is out, he's out doing his thing, running around and, 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 and being an energetic man, but he got tired. And his brother Jacob said, listen, Esau, are you hungry? Esau said, yes, I'm almost famished because I've been running around all day and I've been doing activities in the woods and now I'm about to die because I haven't eaten. So Jacob said, listen, uh, I have a bowl of soup. Uh, Esau said, well, listen, can I have it? So Jacob then says, I tell you what, I'll exchange for you this bowl of soup for your future inheritance. Now, of course, that sounds crazy because none of us would ever jeopardize what we can have in the future for what we want today. Yeah, yeah, none of us would ever give up what we could have tomorrow to satisfy ourselves today. Yeah, Esau says, listen, what good is an inheritance tomorrow if I die today? And so what Esau did was he exchanged 
his birthright. He gave up his inheritance for a bowl of soup. It's what we do all the time. Any time that you and I choose the path of unrighteousness today, we jeopardize our future for tomorrow. Any time we give in to saying foul things to people today, we jeopardize our future for tomorrow. Any time we do the wrong things in our flesh today, we jeopardize our future for tomorrow. Any time we think the wrong thoughts today, we jeopardize our future for tomorrow. So what does God say? God says you need to protect your future. You need to protect your inheritance. I got some stuff planted in the ground waiting to grow up for you. I got a thing out there waiting to grow up to be a bountiful harvest for you. But if you don't protect your future, you are going to jeopardize what I have planned for you. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has entered into the heart of man what God has for you. But what I do know is this, you got a bright future and all God is saying is don't let anybody cause you to act today in a manner that will jeopardize your future. Don't let anybody, don't let your friends out of peer pressure distract you. Don't let your church members and colleagues and family and neighbors and co-workers, don't let anybody cause you to jeopardize your future because this is your future. God has set aside this future for you. God has prepared this future for you. And what God is saying is this, you got a bright future. And if you only knew what you had, you wouldn't act the way that people want you to act. And so somebody's going to say, well, if God were to just tell me what I'm going to get, I'd do better. If God just give me a hint, let me know. Is it a new job? Is it a new car? Is it some more money? God, let me know what you got to set aside for me. But I would say this to you. He already has. He's already told you what he has for you. More than that, he's already shown you. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things will be added to you. The Bible says, bring into my storehouse your tithes and offerings and see won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing unto you. In other words, what God is saying, don't miss the fact that I've already said to you, if you do right, I will bless you. Yeah, I got testimony from David who says, yes, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He protects my soul and, and lets me lie down beside the still waters. He walks me through the valley of the shadow of death and allows me not to fear. But more than that, how does God bless me? What inheritance do I have? He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David has already shown us how God can bless us, how we have a great inheritance. But more than that, God has already shown us through the death of his son. God already gave us the greatest gift. He's already given us the greatest part of our inheritance when he hung Jesus up on the cross, when he nailed him in his hands and nailed him in his feet, when he stuck him in his side, when he had him bleed out both blood and water, what God did was say, this is the greatest part of your inheritance. I've already paid it for it. All I'm asking for you to do is now act right. Act like you appreciate what I set aside. Yeah. And when God did that, he was saying to us, I'm going to give you part of your inheritance before you even know who I am. Oh, that's, that's powerful. God says, I'm going to give you part of your inheritance before you even know you're in the will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you part of what you have not earned even before you come into this world. Jesus died while we were yet sinning to allow us the right to the tree of life. And God is saying this, we always have a choice. We can choose the kind of life where we are constantly fighting for something better and no one is on our side fighting with us. Or we can have the life that God wants us to have where God is fighting our battles with us, where God is side by side with us, where God is right in the trenches with us, where God is right next to us and God is fighting our battles for us. You can be out there on your own or you can be with God. And when we have God on our side, new mercies come into our life every morning. 
and we see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's the kind of life I want. I don't know about you, but I want the kind of life where God is with me when trouble comes. I want the kind of inheritance that gives me peace when confusion comes into my life. I want the kind of inheritance that gives me joy even when I get bad news. I want the kind of inheritance that gives me love even when the world doesn't want to show me love. I want the kind of inheritance that gives me long suffering when I have to be patient with people. Because sometimes the inheritance that we get isn't just to benefit us, but also to benefit others. And so I say to you today, look for your inheritance, but also protect it. Because God has something for you. But you got to behave, and I got to behave in a manner where we can protect our future. Final thing is this. Paul says that if we're going to protect our future, we got to know our power. We got to know our power. Paul tells us that when we know the power that God has directed towards us, we will be more willing to keep on the path that God wants us to be. We know that without God, we are unable to live the life that God has called us into. We also know that Jesus specifically told the disciples that he was sending them and us the Holy Spirit so that we could have power. Having power that God gives us also helps us with the inheritance. When we are aware of the power that God has for us, we're able to receive the inheritance easier. When we think about our inheritance, we may not feel worthy. We may feel as if we don't deserve it. We may feel as if we can't handle it. But when we understand the power that God gives us, it makes it easier for us to receive the inheritance. When you and I realize that God sent us power to start on this journey of salvation, we understand that God initiated this whole thing. He gave us power to understand the benefit of giving our life to Christ, and we accepted that power. He then gave us power to stay on the path through the power of the Holy Spirit being our comforter and guide. God uses his power to keep us from undoing his good work. And when we accept his power, we are better for it. Well, how does God use his power to keep us from undoing his good work? Anybody ever had the Holy Spirit warn you about something you were about to do? Anybody ever had the Holy Spirit as your conscience tell you, don't go down that path? Anybody ever had the Holy Spirit convict you when you did something wrong? Anybody ever had the Holy Spirit declare that you should go the right way? Those are instances where God is trying to keep us from undoing what he has done. And we still have the choice to either accept the warning of the Holy Spirit or to go on our own way. When we face obstacles on our journey, God gives us the power to resist temptation. He gives us power to stay the course and finish our race. When we have a crisis in our faith because life takes a turn we weren't ready for, he gives us power to keep hope alive and to keep believing. He sends us the power so that we don't suffer from lack of power. And when you realize how much power you have, you'll see the need to protect your future. And I don't know about you, but I want all the power that God has for me in 2021. I want the power to resist temptation. I want the power to love my enemies. I want the power to sustain my faith. I want the power to lead others to Jesus. I want the power to believe and not doubt. I want the power to encourage others to believe. I want the power to trust him when the situation looks like it's only getting worse. And I want the power to give the good news to someone else who needs God to love them. I want the power that God has for me. Do you want the power that God has for you in 2021? Do you want the power that God has laid aside for you? Do you want the hope that God has for you in this year? Do you want the inheritance that God has for you? Do you want the power to believe God when others say it's not going to happen? Do you want the power to trust the Lord when your situation seems to get worse? 
Mary and Martha sitting there watching their brother die. They needed the power to keep on believing. The disciples in the boat as the waves were crashing on their boat needed the power to keep on believing. Do you want the power to trust God when he says just keep on believing? God has the power for you. All you got to do is ask for the power. So this year, I want you to walk with me in this same declaration that I want the power and that you want the power that God has for you this year. You want the hope and I want the hope that God has for you this year. You want the inheritance that God has for you. And I guarantee you, when we walk in the power that God has for us, when we walk in the hope that God has for us, when we see the inheritance that God has for us, we will be able to declare, yes, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything I could think and possibly imagine. God is able to pick me up from my situation and to straighten me out, that God is able to heal my body. God is able to give me a breakthrough in my finances. God is able to bring my family back together. God is able to inspire my children to do the right things. God is able to inspire my parents to understand the perspective I'm coming from. Everybody can tap into God's power. Everybody can tap into God's hope. And I declare to you today, if you want God's power, if you want God's hope, oh our God, I, I bless you, Lord, that God will be there for you. God, we bless your name. We give you praise, God, because we know, Lord, that you are there for us and on our side, God. We give you praise this morning, God, for we know that this year you got a bright future planned for us, God. you got a bright future planned for us, and we have to protect it. This year is going to be great, but we got to protect our future. we got to watch the way that we act and speak and think and allow God to give us this bright future that he has for us. Maybe somebody out there thought you didn't have a future. Maybe somebody out there thought you didn't have any hope. Maybe somebody out there thought you had no inheritance, but I guarantee you today, I declare to you, God has a future for you. God has a hope that he's calling you to. God is working out your situation right now. And for some, God has already worked it out. You just need to walk into the blessing that God has for you. Today, we offer to you the chance to join God's church, a chance to, to see your inheritance, a chance to know the hope that you've been called to, and a chance to have the power that God has for you this year. And so we offer to you today the chance that maybe uh, you need prayer, Maybe you need more power in your life, power to resist temptation. God is here to give it to you. God is here, and as a church, we're here to be in solidarity with you in prayer as we collectively go now to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you that our eyes of our hearts have been opened to know the inheritance that we have, to know the hope we've been called to, and to know, God, the power that we have. God, somebody watching and listening, somebody just need to hear that you were there. And so, God, we ask now that you would reach out and speak to them, Lord. Help them hear you, oh God. Help them know that you are there waiting just for them to ask for your help. God, maybe somebody's been on this journey with you for quite some time, and maybe they got some bad news, God, but they need to know that you're still there. They need to know, God, that you're still on the throne. And so, God, we, we come to you also in agreement with them that, God, you will hear their prayer. Maybe there's somebody, God, who just needs to know you in the parting of their sins. And so, God, we come also in solidarity and agreement with them, God, that you will hear their prayers. Lord, we love you. God, we know we have a great inheritance. God, we know you have something magnificent planned for us this year. And so, God, we cannot wait to receive it. God, we cannot wait to walk into it. God, we cannot wait to see everything you have for us in this year. Yes, Lord, we know that there are going to be some difficult days. Yes, God, we know there are going to be some tests come our way. But God, we know that if you are on our side, we can look back and say, yes, my good days have outweighed my bad days. My up days have outweighed my down days. My sunshine has outweighed my clouds. My, my good days have outweighed everything else, God. And so we declare, God, and thank you already, God, for the good days to come. Bless us now, God, as I pray in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I hope that you can now see that God has so much in store for you. You just got to walk into it and protect your future.
We now turn our service over to Lady Leah Love as she conducts our birthdays and anniversaries. Good morning, Lee Chapel. This week's birthdays include Kennedy Covington, January 3rd, Reverend Yvette Tisdale, January 4th, Paulette Burris, January 5th, Samuel Cunningham, January 7th, and Fonte Wiley, January 8th. We send you lots of love and virtual hugs today. Happy birthday! We also have a wedding anniversary, Michelle and Kent Chan. Happy anniversary to our Lee Chapel couple. All right, thank you for those announcements. Uh, let me make this announcement before I forget it. Uh, we have come to the close of the year last week, and we will soon be mailing out your contribution forms uh, for this year. If you've had a change of address, please email the church at leechapelchurch at gmail.com so that we can issue your contribution statement to the right mailing address. Again, uh, if you have changed address, please email us so that we can register that new address in our directory and information so we can mail that out to you, all right? Well, listen, I certainly hope that you have enjoyed uh, our services more. I hope that it's ministered to you. Let me remind you that we start this new year off and we will have our continued services, our prayer call on Tuesday. We're starting back with our Bible study on this Wednesday, and certainly we will have our prayer call on Thursday and church school on Saturday, and look to join us for worship on Sunday. Please, let's keep everyone on our uh, church list in prayer. I uh, got a text this morning from Sister Tiffany Ligon Brown. Let us keep her in prayer as she is in process now of delivering her child. And so we'll keep them in our prayers and certainly uh, pray God's blessings upon them as they go into delivery about 30 minutes ago. And so we want to keep them lifted up in our prayers. Let us keep, again, all of our church members in our prayers. Let us keep our extended family in our prayers and our extended church family in our prayers. Uh, let us remind ourselves of, our, again, our activities this week and our announcements. And let us go into this week full of the conviction that God indeed has a bright future for us. We just need to walk into it. Until next time, may God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.